it's like if you if your dream car right like if your dream car was like a bmw m5 right your dream car is a bmw you look at it you look at it you look at it and like you're trying to decide on like what to pull the trigger between that and a mercedes amg 63 right whatever the, your flavor mm -hmm. is that's great if i pull up to your driveway and i throw the keys to the m5 for you for a week and i'm like just drive it on me you'll never buy the mercedes you can't you mm -hmm. literally physically can't because I've established a neural pathway in your brain that associates that car, the feeling of that car with me. And even if you don't want that car, you'll probably buy another car from me. Yep. And so when we think about this, this theory of like content or giving value up front, what you're really doing is protecting your business and creating an ideal client. Because if you give that value on the front, they take it, they consume it, and they don't implement it and don't buy you just saved yourself a refund and a nightmare customer or somebody that wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. If they take it and they implement it and they achieve it and don't need anymore, you just created the best marketing machine you could ever have in your business. And then if they take it, they consume it and they need help implementing it, then they pay you to implement it and escalate up your value ladder. It is literally the definition of a win-win-win game. Yeah. So the thing that's really important though is that giving away all this value up front is not being a fire hose, right? Because a fire hose creates objections and back doors. Mm. It's understanding how to deliver all that message and content, but in a way that's breadcrumbable so they can take it one bite at a time, which is why we create lead magnets and customer journeys, that's right? right? Mm -hmm. yep. And so, but a lead magnet is like, hey, give me your email for this 86 page PDF that you're never going to hear from me again that I know you're not going to read. And then three days later, I'm going to give you a coupon and try to close you in my fucking course. Like, no. <laughs> Oh, that's called high-end prostitution. Do not do it in your marketing, <laughs> right? And so, you know, and, and I do want to talk about, we talked about Matt before when we think mm -hmm. about this, and this is all Simon Bowen, um, if you don't know Simon Bowen, but mm -hmm. really pre-pandemic or pre any crazy time in the world, economy down or anything, um, you know, most of the time we're operating in business from this place of neutrality, right? Like we're mm -hmm. here, we have customers, they're looking for wants and needs, right? They're like, okay, my life is kind of working, but I want it to be better, right? And so it's kind of like frivolous stuff, like buying our supplements, buying our clothes, buying our bags. So we call that neutral, right? If they're kind of living this life and they want to go from neutral to pleasure or add more pleasure into their life. Well, the moment all of this started happening or any big thing happens, 9-11, pandemic, market crash, housing market crash, jobs, whatever, we're not net neutral anymore. We're net negative because human agency has been taken away. We let go of all the frivolous things because our basic Maslow hierarchy of needs are not being met. Right. We are in fear of safety, shelter, water, and food. And so the difference being is that the marketing that you used before, if you use now, comes off as tone deaf, disconnected, and will put you out of business because they don't even understand that language anymore. It's like speaking French to somebody who speaks Spanish, like they can't get it. Mm -hmm. So your message doesn't change, the wrapping paper changes. Right mm -hmm. before the deliverable was like, Hey, entrepreneurs, like the world's amazing, everything's great. Let me teach you how to double your business. And now it's like, Hey, I'm going to teach you the same content and the same systems and principles, but now I'm going to teach you how to have a business in 30 days, right. right? Because all I'm trying to move people to now is from pain back to neutrality, right? Through a level of safety or security or certainty. Mm -hmm. And when we think about ourselves as entrepreneurs or business owners or coaches or even leaders in our life, our job is to be a lighthouse or to be a mountain. It's to be sturdy. It's to be firm. It's to be mm -hmm. steady and constant. And sometimes that means that we have to let go of the frivolous and hold that for our potential customers to where now it's like, hey, I get that I have the best six-month program in the world or the best mastermind or the best 90-day course or seven-day detox, right? None of that does me any good if they're so far back and so scared and unsafe that they can't even commit to the first day. That's right. right? Yeah. And that's where you have to really focus. And you know, what I say is, and, and we all say, that's not what I say, a little ego comment there. Um, <laughs> we all say is you have to meet the customer where they are, right? right? And that's where I think most businesses need to shift their focus because even, even up until this year, yeah, Facebook ads have gone up in price, right? All these things, but we're still kind of living in like this sweetheart zone of like, we can print money on demand without having oh, yeah. to put work into it, right? Well, think about like the lack of uh, regulations that a lot of business owners online don't have right now. There's a lot mm -hmm. of still wild, wild west kind of stuff in terms of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're still living yeah. in a window of time where we got to be, you know, aware of this mm -hmm. so we can actually capitalize correctly. 
Yeah. And so what's happening is like, you know, we can still get away with not doing deep research on the avatar of the customer, right? I teach customer first all day because anything you do without their words, their feedback or their input is just wasting time, money or energy, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, in two years, you're not going to able to be able to afford digital marketing or paid media if you don't know the target on day one, right? right? And so what I tell people right now, and what I'm still seeing to this day with all my clients and customers is that most of the companies that don't spend the time to really get into the weeds with the people like knowing what they tick, but like, let me just be clear, an avatar sheet is not a single mom who drives a minivan. Nobody gives a fuck. That has nothing to do with <laughs> buying your product, right? Like, no, no. Like, I want to know how she feels, how she sees herself, like what her pain points are, what gets in the way. And then I want to know where she wants to go because my only job is to create a bridge to get there step by step by step. Yep. And I watch most companies market for themselves. And that's the biggest problem. They sit in this boardroom. They sit in these meetings like, this is our marketing campaign. This is the pain point. This is the word. I'm like, whose pain point? And they're like, theirs. I'm like, is that the word they use or is that the word you use? And there's a big distinction. And as we talk about Travis, Travis and I have had experience this together because we've co-worked on partners together. But yeah, there's been a couple where we had an instance where we were running webinars that were converting really, really well. And it was for pain relief. I'm like, oh, you know, this pain, this pain, this pain. And then we surveyed everybody and got the word. And the word they used was not a word we would have used. We added and the webinar doubled conversions by changing one word in the title because it was something that resonated with them. Like that was the language they spoke mm. with the word that they used. And so when I say this, and I'm saying this to everybody right now, it's really easy to market right now. Like everything is great. The world is opening back up. Like things are here except nobody else thinks that way because we're forward thinking entrepreneurs. We're visionaries and we love chaos because it gives us the ability to thrive in discomfort and solve a problem. Right? That's right. Most people don't think like that. And I'm already watching people market like all of this is great. Everybody's back to normal. No, there's still 30 million people without a job. There's yeah. still people not wondering how they're going to pay their rent and pay their bills. And I'm watching people start the race way before it's ready to run. And we need to make sure that we stay where people are because we're 12 to 18 months away from being able to talk about like, yeah, let's go double your company or let's go on this frivolous vacation, right? Like we have to deal with the fallout and the echo mm -hmm. chamber that we kind of created here. And we need to make sure that we're present and really diving into where our customers are and whatever the business is, right? And, and the things that are going to work from this point forward there's been a lot of things that have changed, right? Social media consumption went up 12 times. Podcast listenership went up 42% in That's a month. That's right, yeah. 42%, right? <laughs> Some of those are going to stick. Some of them are going to leave because now we're going to take eight hours back out of the day and put people back at work, right? Don't mm -hmm. get upset about the fallout. Don't be upset that your video views are going down or your accounts are going down or anything. This is a part of the cycle, but also realize that the level of connection that was created for all of you that jumped into the water and like you did this work with them and you increased your frequency and connection, that level of relationship is going to become the new norm in marketing. Mm. And if you go back to trying to be transactional or only email once a week or not create consistency, you will put yourself out of business because we, in a three month period, just established a brand new paradigm of relational marketing and it's going to become the new expectation. So all of these people that are getting caught with their shorts around their ankles, right? Mm -hmm. That like, wait, I have to talk to my customers. I have to respond to the emails. I have to take care <laughs> of the people who pay me money. Like, yes, 